Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. Now we're going to go over the anti and syn additions. So these are the ones that are not stereoselective. Remember, stereoselective means that it's only going to do anti or only going to do syn. But reactions that do both are not stereoselective. Okay? And so there's a few reactions that we're going to do. There's five in total. Well, actually, there's four reactions and then just a reminder of rearrangement, and then we'll wrap up with problem solving. Okay? So this is going to be the trend. We're going to go through the reaction types, we'll do problems, and we'll move on to the next set. That's the basic flow. So let's get started. The first one is the hydrogen halide, and this will probably take a little bit more time than the others, simply because we're going to go over a lot of theory points from this. So let's first start off by uh, emphasizing what X could be. Now, if you remember, X equals a halogen. And so in our case, it could be I, which is better than Br, better than Cl, and better than F. So that's our trend, and including the order of this trend. The order is not so important, just so you know. Um, it's not like SM1, SN2, or uh, let's say SN2, or you know, leaving group trends. It's not like that. But if you had to pick, this is the order. I is the most reactive for this reaction here. Now, when I take, let's say, hydrogen halide, so let's say HI, and I react it with an alkene, there's a few things to consider. The first one, as you know from the previous video, is to identify the degrees of the carbon. So this is regioselective, right? So we have a difference in degree. Now, it turns out that um, when we break this double bond, we already know from the introductory video that the H, now think about it, H is coming in first because it's more positive, right? And I is more negative. I, any halogen is more electronegative than hydrogen. And so that's why we see this pattern. But when H comes in, it goes to the lower degree carbon, right? So we're going to have the H add over here. And the reason why is because we want to transfer this double bond to connect to the H, leaving us with a carbocation that's secondary. Now, this idea of secondary carbocation rather than primary carbocation, meaning H came into the secondary carbon, this exists because of cation stability, right? And so once we put the H in, now I minus is the one that left with the electron. So I is now negative it's going to wind up going into the carbon that's positive. And you wind up getting that right there. Now, I want to emphasize a few things. First off, you don't have to show where the H goes. So I did show it to you here for, for illustrative purposes, but we would never show the H's location on an exam because usually you're doing line formula. And in line formula, you don't have to show the H, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing I want to talk about is I want to refer to the energy diagram here. So imagine this is the reactant, and this is our product, and this is our intermediate, right? So we have this intermediate carbocation. So I know that if we're doing this reaction, we should end up lower in energy than where we began, because otherwise we wouldn't really discuss this reaction. So in generally speaking, whatever reactions we talk about, it should be thermodynamically favored unless told otherwise. Okay, and so in this case, it is thermodynamically favored, and almost every reaction that we'll learn about is as well. All right, now we do have this intermediate. Now think about it. We have a stable alkene becoming a carbocation. So no surprise, it's going to be higher in energy as an intermediate. So here's our reactant, here's our product, and here's our intermediate. Now the next question is, which hill is higher? Is it higher to go to the intermediate, or is it higher to climb and become the product? And it turns out it's the first step, because the first step we're making a carbocation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the first hill, and that should be the highest hill of them all, because we're going from stable to a carbocation, and then a carbocation back to stable. So whenever things are charged, that's going to be the hardest thing to do in this reaction. It's going to be the rate determining step. Okay, so here we are, and now we're going to go over another hill that's not as high and drop down to the end. So our, our, of course, thermodynamically speaking, delta G is going to be favored. It's going to be a negative value. Same thing with delta H. And as far as our rate determining step, the delta G double dagger 
is going to be that first hill that we have to climb. So that's right there, the rate determining step. That's called the slow step of the reaction. So this is the slow step because that's the formation of something that's unstable. Okay? And so now, if you remember, uh, just a, re a quick review, Hammond's postulate, it told us that if you want to determine what the, the height, the top of that hill, what the transition state, TS1, TS2, what TS1 looks like, then you should see which side, reacting a product, is closer in energy to it. So this right here, the I, is closer to the top of the hill because this is an endothermic step. So since the first step is endothermic, we know that the product is what looks like the top of the hill. Now remember what I said back in this review, this video over here about energy diagrams. We refer to product even if it's an intermediate. So when you look at any one step, you could think of the left side as the reactant and the right side as the product, even if it's not a product, if it's an intermediate. So the product is what we're concerned with in an endothermic reaction. That's what we need to think about in, in terms of how to stabilize or make the hill lower so it's a faster reaction, right? So this is the kinetics of the reaction, the speed, the rate at which this reaction goes from start to finish, or at least through the, the, the most important hill. Now, in an exothermic reaction, that would be where the reactants are most important to us. So, for example, in the step of I to P, what we care about is the intermediate that's closer to the top of the hill for that last step right so in both cases as you can see the the carbocation is what's most important because going through the rate determining step the top of the hill is closer to the carbocation side and going from the carbocation to the product the top of the hill is closer to the carbocation so either way you look at it the carbocation is the most important thing here right to make this reaction fast all right so that was Hammond's postulate, and, and that's just a quick refresher about Hammond's postulate. Now, let's think about the carbocation. Now, we already handled the concept, but I'm going to just kind of tie it back to this point now. Now, remember I said to you that when you have regioselectivity differences, meaning there are different degree carbons that make up the alkene, that you want to pick the first thing coming in to go to the lower degree because that guarantees you that you're going to have a more stable carbocation. And now you know why. The, the stability of the carbocation, based on Hammond's postulate, is extremely important. It is, the, it is what we need to be concerned about to make the reaction faster, right? So if, by, for hypothetical purposes, if we made the secondary carbon neutral, and the primary carbon a carbocation, it would be much higher in energy, and the hill would be higher as well. So we wouldn't do that. That's why this reaction only proceeds the way I show you here. You always make the more stable carbocation when you break that double bond. Okay? Now, there's a rule called Markovnikov's rule. Now, Markovnikov, who was a chemist that came up with what I just described, but he said it in a, in a very different way in terms of focusing on the H's around the carbon. So what he said was, uh, put the hydrogen onto the carbon that has more hydrogens, H's. So when you look at an alkene, this is primary, this is secondary. The fact that it's primary has two H's on it and the secondary has one. So what Markovnikov said is, when you add HX, the H should go to the carbon that has more H's. And that's really going to do what we just described. So he described it in terms of the proton and where the proton should go, but we now understand it's because of the kinetics, it's because of the stability of the carbocation that plays a role into this philosophy, into this theory. So his theory came about at a very early time in chemistry, and so it was, you know, useful, but now it's not as useful, because sometimes Markovnikov's rule doesn't work. So sometimes you might put the H somewhere that it, it seems like it, it, it's not following Markovnikov's rule because you're counting the number of H's, but it turns out that it's actually a better place to go. I'll give you an example of that. 
So anti-macarbonate.